other specified feeding or eating disorders.、Uh, there are some eating disorders that are not the typical, or rather, not the main disorders that we would generally associate with、uh, eating disorders. These include, for instance, atypical anorexia nervosa. The individual's weight is within or above the norm. Well, that's why it's atypical. Bulimia nervosa with low frequency or limited duration. That's when an individual has the binge eating or compensatory behaviors occurring less than once a week or less than three months. So it doesn't happen frequently. There's also binge eating disorder with low frequency and limited duration. That's when binge eating is less than once a week or less than three months on average. There's also just purging behavior on its own. Whereby there's persistent use of diuretics, self-induced vomiting, and the misuse of laxatives, but there is no binge eating that is present at all. So thus, it can't really be counted as bulimia nervosa. It's just purging by itself. And then finally, there's also night eating syndrome, where there's a recurring night eating where individuals who are awake from sleep go and eat excessively, and that they may have already had dinner. There is recall and awareness of the eating present, so they're not like sleep eating. And、uh, night eating causes distress. It is not explained by issues in the circadian rhythms, and it is not due to a comorbid disorder nor substance use disorder. Finally, there's also unspecified feeding slash eating disorders, and that is when there is actually insignificant or insufficient amount of evidence to make a specific diagnosis. But there are still some characteristics of feeding and eating disorders present that causes significant clinical distress and impairs occupational, social, or some other important function area. And yeah,、um, that's other specified and unspecified feeding/eating disorders.